Hi guys, hope you are doing fantastic. Today, I am going to talk about how to score 100 out of 100 in meteorology. For those of you who are very new to aviation, meteorology is one of the subjects which you require to clear to get your commercial pilot's license. MET has 50 multiple choice questions. Each question carries 2 marks. So the total exam is for 100 marks. When I gave my exam, I could score only 98 out of 100. I will discuss how I could get to that score of 98 out of 100 and what mistake I did and where did I lose marks so that you don't make the same mistake I made and you are going to score 100 out of 100 marks. I am going to divide whole topic into three parts. First being how to read, second being what to read, what books to read and third being who helped me. To help you understand how to read, I am going to take you back to 2017. Back then, I was working as a doctor in Trivandrum, Kerala. There was this one doctor, Dr. Ayappan. He is the consultant and head department of neurology. He is one of the best neurologists I ever met. One day, he was giving a seminar which was scheduled at 11 am in the morning. But the problem was it was my post night duty. That means I had been working in the hospital all night from previous evening and I am supposed to go home and take rest by 9 am in the morning. Even though I was tired, I have decided to go ahead and attend the seminar. I attended the seminar and most of the time I dozed off. But there was something special about the seminar. The slides which were made by Ayapan sir were very good. I too gave a lot of seminars as a doctor in my life but the slides were never so good. The specialty of those slides was they were written in a very optimized way. The slides were not underwritten or the slides were not overwritten. What do I mean by underwriting or overwriting? See, if you take a paragraph and you want to put it in a slide as a bullet point, sometimes you take the whole context of the paragraph and write one word of it. I call this as underwriting. Sometimes you copy the whole paragraph into a slide. I call this as overwriting. The slides which were made by Dr. Ipan were very optimized. They were not underwritten, they were not overwritten. So, even though I dosed off, most of the seminar, I gathered all my guts and approached sir at the end of the seminar and I complimented him, the slides were very good and I asked him how could he make such an optimized slides, what was the technique he was following. Basically I was asking him to give me a few tips. But sir replied, those slides were not made for the seminar. Those slides were made back then when he was a medical student. So whatever he read, whatever the information he gathered, he made into a bunch of slides so that he will retain the information for longer time. I too had the same problem as a medical student I had to read a lot of books but the problem was retaining the information. So what I used to do is I used to teach my juniors or I used to discuss with other doctors the topics which I read but this couldn't help to retain the information for much longer time. That day changed my life. That day changed the game. I started converting all the medical books into a bunch of bullet points. I applied the same technique to metrology also. I converted metrology books into a bunch of bullet points. When I read the second time, it was very easy. It saved a lot of time. The revision was very quick. But that's how I could save time for regulations and navigation which I passed in the same attempt. I hope this tip to help you. Before coming to what books to read, I would like to give you a quick update. I am starting my own navigation classes from 25th of June. There is a demo class on my YouTube channel. If you like the demo class, please join my classes. To understand what to read, let me take you back to 2019. Back then, I was still a doctor working with Medanta de Medicity, Gurgaon. That day, I had a flight from Delhi to Hyderabad. It was a spice jet flight and the guy sitting beside me turned out to be a captain at Spice. He was traveling back to his base. We started talking and I revealed that I want to pursue CPL. At that time, I was not preparing for CPL yet, but I was still doing my groundwork. So while doing, I downloaded a few Oxford textbooks. I showed him those textbooks on my laptop. He told me that day that every student starting will not read standard textbooks. He advised me to stick to Oxford books from the very beginning. After a few months, I shifted to Rambal Chowk and started preparing for CPL exams. <clears throat> there, 
I met a lot of students also preparing for CPL exams. Every one of them suggested not to read Oxford and to go for IC Joshi. They said IC Joshi is more than enough to pass the exam. They also said it is the easiest way to pass the exam. So I bought my own IC Joshi. So after a few days of reading IC Joshi, I felt this book was very useful to pass the exam. But it was not concept oriented book. IC Joshi is made in such a way that it gathered all the information and condensed into a book which you can read very fast and pass the exam. Finally, I couldn't read IC Joshi anymore because I didn't understand any concepts. What I did was I went back to Oxford and I read the whole Oxford textbook and whenever I completed a chapter in Oxford, I applied the same concepts in IC Joshi. So finally, I ended up reading all Oxford and also reading IC Joshi. Finally, what I conclude is you should read at least first 11 chapters from Oxford and practice all the bits from IC Joshi. When I completed reading all the theory, I started doing IC Joshi bits. After doing all IC Joshi bits in one go, I couldn't do only 20 to 25 bits. These bits I revised just the day before exam. So my preparation was very easy. I read the concepts once and I made everything into bullet points. So the revision time was very less and doing bits was very easy because I already knew the concepts. Only I had to memorize rest 20 to 25 bits which I did before the exam. There were these three chapters, Meta Codes, Station Model and Met Services in India. These three chapters I couldn't understand on my own. So I approached Vinod sir. Vinod sir has an aviation academy in Rampal Chuk. I explained him that I cannot attend regular classes as I am also working at the same time and I am preparing. And I requested him to take these three classes for me. So he allowed to sit in his classes when these three chapters were going on. So I could adjust my duty timings at the hospital and I attended these classes. This is how I managed to clear my MET exam. I sincerely thank Dr. Ayappan, Captain Nickel from Spicet and Vinod sir for being a part of my success. And coming to the last topic, where did I lose that one bit? I had to travel from my home to Hyderabad airport, which is a travel time of 5 hours and had to wait one hour for check-in to get on a plane and travel all the way to Delhi and reach the center and then write the exam. I didn't plan this out well, so I had no rest before exam. I think I lost this one mark to human error. Thank you for hanging on so long. I wish you 100 marks in metrology exam. You can join me in my NAG classes starting on 25th June. Stay home, stay safe.